Lesson 11.11, .11, find volume of composed figures. This is 11.12 .12 in the older copyright. A composed figure is a composite figure. Composite means made up of various parts. So a composite figure is made up of two or more various geometric figures that were put together. And the geometric figures may be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. We can find the volume of rectangular prisms that are combined to make a composite figure. So here we have two prisms. We have this rectangular one down here, and then we have this little one-unit square one up here. And we can break apart the prisms, find the volume of each smaller prism, then total their volumes. We know this one is one cubic unit. If it's in inches, it's one cubic inch. It's one inch by one inch by one inch for length, width, and height. This one is 2 inches in length, 3 inches in width, and 1 inch in height, so it's 6 inches cubed. When we add it to the 1 inch cube, we get 7 inches cubed, or 7 cubic inches. We can break apart the prisms in different ways, and some ways will be more efficient or sensible than others, depending on the given measures. So, these are the same and we could split it so that the line is coming here and we're, we've got the yellow one and the pink one. We could also split it this way so we've got this pink one here and the yellow one in back. Either way will work. We can split this so we take the yellow one off the top of the pink one or we can make this the yellow one and the pink one this little one on the side. Now look at this one. We can take the bottom off as the yellow one and have a, this pink prism above it. We could also split it into three and have one long one here, one long one here, and then the pink one in the middle. Just make sure they don't overlap when you break them apart. Don't overlap your measures, okay? This one is kind of L-shaped. We can take the front off as a big yellow prism and have the little pink one in the back. We could also break it so that this is the pink one and the yellow one is on this side, see? Some will make more sense. It makes more sense to split this into two, so we're just doing two volumes. This way we'd have three volumes, but it would depend on what the given measures are. We can break apart the figure into two prisms, then total their volumes. And the height for prism A can be found by subtracting the height of prism B from the total height. And the width of prism A, right here, we can see prism B is 2 centimeters. The width of prism A is the same as the width of prism B. This is one flat quadrilateral right here, this face. So for prism A, we've got a 4 centimeter length, a 2 centimeter width, and the height is 7 minus 4. So this must be 3. We have 8 times 3, that's 24 cubic centimeters. For B, we've got 5 times 2 times 4, that's 40 cubic centimeters. We total the volumes, 24 plus 40, that's 64 cubic centimeters for this composite figure. And all we did was break them apart into two separate prisms. We can subtract the volume of prisms formed in empty spaces from the greatest possible volume to find the volume of a composite figure. So we know this one is 5 centimeters in length, 2 centimeters in width, and 7 centimeters in height. We do 5 times 2 times 7. That's 70 cubic centimeters. The empty space, if this is a 5 and that's a 4, well then we know the length is a 1. That's 5 minus 4. We know the width is 2, and the height for the empty space would be 7 minus 4. It would be that 3. So we've got 1 times 2 times 3. That's 6 cubic centimeters. We take that away from the 70, and we've got 64 cubic centimeters, just like we did when we added the two prisms together.
when we added them together, we got 64 cubic centimeters. So all we did for this way was take away, we subtracted that little empty space and got 64 cubic centimeters. For this composite figure, we've got one big prism and then we've got this little one sticking out. For the big one, we see the length is 10 feet. We see the width is 8 feet and the height is 3 feet. So we do that one. 10 times 8 times 3 is 240 cubic feet. For the little one, we know this height is flat here. It's all the same height. So if that says 3 feet, then this must be 3 feet high. So we've got 4 times 2 times 3. That's 24 cubic feet. We add them together for the composite volume. We get 264 cubic feet. We can break apart this composite figure into two prisms or three prisms. And we can use subtraction to find measures that aren't shown. We've got it split into the little prism on the top and the big one on the bottom. So for the little one on the top, we've got a four inch length. We've got a six inch width because it's the same width as here. And we have a two inch height. That's 48 cubic inches. That's 24 times two. For the big one, we've got 10 times six times four, which is 240 cubic inches. We add them together, we get 288 cubic inches. Now, if we split it into three, we know this is 10, we know this is three and this is four, so that makes a seven. So to find the length of A, we do 10 minus seven. We do the entire length minus the given ones. So that must be a three for a length. It's got a six for a width, and it's got the same height, 4, as C. It's 72 cubic inches. For B, it's got a length of 4. We see that. A width of 6, but its height is 4 plus 2, or 2 plus 4. See these two heights? That's the total height. We do 4 times 6 times 6 and get 144 cubic inches. And then for C, we do 3. It's right here. That's a 3. We know the width is 6 and we know the height is 4 and we get another 72 cubic inches and we add them together and get 288 cubic inches. So actually this way is probably easier because we're only doing two of them. See? Now we've got to do three prisms. So in this case, Breaking it into two would probably be more efficient. So where should we draw lines to break apart the figures? Well, it depends on the measurements that are given. Here, we can see this length is a four and this one is a three, so we know this is a seven. And it already broke it apart in length. We know this height is two and this one is four and that one's six. We could just do four times six times two plus four, which would be a six for a height. Then we could do this one, which is a three length, a six width, and a four height. We could also break it apart this way. Either way would work. For this one, it makes more sense to split it into two prisms, just like we did before in the last example. We could split it into three prisms, but it would be more efficient to split it into two. Now look, this one's very similar, isn't it? But look, at this side is higher. So these two are the same height. They're both four on each side, the left and the right. But now look, this one's got a height of four and this one's got a height of five. So in this case, it would be smart to split it into three different ones because we have three different heights, see? Here we have two heights, so we can just take this one off the top and do it that way. Here we've got this composite figure and I split it into A, B, and C. A, we have a length of one, we have a width of three, because it's all the same width, and we have a height of four. That's 
7 cubic yards. For B, well look, if this is 6 going all the way across, and this is a 1 and that's a 2, we can take away the 1 and the 2 to get this middle piece. So the length for B would be 6 minus the 1 plus 2. That's 6 minus 3. That means the length is 3. We know the width is 3. And the height for B would be the 7 of the entire height minus this little given height here. We're just looking for this little piece, so this one won't work. That's the side of A. That's the, the height of A. To find this little dotted line, we need to do 7 minus 5. That tells us that's a 2. And we multiply it and get 18 cubic yards. And then for C, we've got a 2 times a 3 times a 7. That was the easy one, wasn't it? And we add them together and get 67 cubic yards. So the difficult one was the middle one. We needed to use subtraction to take this piece of length and this piece of length away from this one to find this middle piece. To find the height, we needed to subtract this height minus this height to get that little piece of height. Here we have a composite figure, and it's showing us that the measures of the dimensions are in meters. Well, Bob built a model of this structure in which each meter was two centimeters. And what is the volume of the structure, and what is the volume of Bob's model? Well, the volume of the structure, we can do six times two times five for the bottom part and get 60 cubic meters. And for the top part, we can do a length of four times a width of two. It's the same width. And our height would be eight minus five. That would give us this. That would be a three. We multiply eight times three, we get 24 cubic meters. We add them together and we know that this entire composite figure, this structure is 84 cubic meters. But Bob made a model of it, so we think. For Bob's model, we can multiply each dimension number by two and then label them as centimeters. If I erased the M for meter here and put a CM, well, then this whole composite figure would be in cubic centimeters instead of cubic meters. So we can just change the label, but each meter was two centimeters. So we need to figure that out. We can take each of these dimensions and multiply them by two and label them as centimeters. Each meter is two centimeters. That means this six would be six times two, 12 centimeters. This two meters would be two times two. That would be four centimeters. And the height for this bottom part of the figure would be five times two. That would be 10 centimeters. So that would be 480 cubic centimeters. For the top one, we've got four times two. That would be eight centimeters. And it's got the same width, so we've got four centimeters. And then the height would be this eight minus five, that three. This height right here is three. So we need to multiply the three times two to get six centimeters. And we multiply them together and get 192 cubic centimeters. We add them together, we get 672 cubic centimeters for the model. Now we talked about in video 11.8 how we can multiply a volume times eight when the edges are double. So here we have one cube unit. Now we have two going across, two going across for the width, and two for the height. So it went from one length, one width, and one height to two length, two width, and two height. But look, we have eight cubes. So we could have multiplied 84 times eight, and we would have gotten 672. If you missed that video, it's linked in the description with all the other videos for chapter 11 that have been all about geometry and volume. 
So remember as you're breaking these composite figures apart, don't overlap them, and try to break them apart in the most efficient and sensible way. And as you're writing any numbers, make sure you write neatly so you don't confuse a 6 with a 0 or a 7 with a 1. You want to make sure you can read your writing and your teacher can read your writing. Have a wonderful day. I hope you're safe. I hope you're well. And I hope you'll join me next time. Bye.